Calling the meeting to order, Kingston Springs Regional Planning Commission, January 12, 2023. And I want to first welcome, we have new members on our planning commission, Marie Stafford. Thank you, Marie, for being willing to uh, sit on this planning commission, and Bob Stoller. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Um, I'm now going to do a roll call of uh, voting members. Keith Allgood is absent. Tony Campbell? Here. Tony Gross? Here. Mike Hargis? Here. Lauren Hill? Here. Mike Patton, oh, that's me, I'm here. And Chuck Slater is absent. Marie Spafford? Here. And Bob Stoller? Here. And non-voting staff, Sharon Armstrong? Here. John Lawless? Here. And Martha Brooke Perry? Here. Okay, thank you. We have a quorum. Um, you have the December 8th 2022 Planning Commission meeting minutes before you. Do we have a motion to approve those? Make a motion we approve the minutes. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay. The, the uh, meeting minutes from last time are accepted. Do we have a motion to approve this agenda which you have before you for January 12th? So moved. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Hi, thank you. Um, I don't one under or A under old business eligible HUD has been resolved. We would like to request that we remove that from the agenda. For this agenda. That's okay, correct. Okay, so item A is uh, we'll your motion is second to vote to remove it. Okay, so this motion would be to approve this agenda as amended. Um, do we have a second? Sure. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? Okay. This agenda as amended is approved. Um, so uh, the next item is community input, and I would like to ask for a show of hands uh, who would like to provide it. But I see one. Okay. And you, sir? Okay, two. Is that it? Okay. So, um, so um, I will ask you each to come up in turn, give us your name and your address. And take five minutes. <laughs> no way. See, yeah. Five minutes. You don't have to take go all of them. You don't have to take all of them. But um, go ahead and, uh, and address the commission. So, with which one of you would like to begin? You ready? Please come on up. And... Hello. My name is Scott Summers. Uh, I live at 795 South Harvard Road. Probably one of the most affected areas by the golf course. I spoke last time. I was a little emotional last time. I, I just uh, want to say a few things. I, I got a question. How many of y'all, just show of hands, have even been to the site and looked at it? You have? I have. I would encourage you to. I, I don't say I can really vote on it if you hadn't even driven over there. But it's not that far away. Go look at it. Uh, I want to say uh, I'm very thankful for a bunch of things, really. Um, I'm glad there's not a subdivision going up there. I'm glad it's a golf course. Uh, Jeff Hooper, you and your gang, I'm thankful Barge Coffin's taking care of this. I mean, I, I truly feel that this has been engineered correctly. Uh, the Civil, I know they can move some dirt. Andy, I, I'm proud of what y'all are doing and the way it's going, okay? Uh, my biggest contingency is all the siltation and the dirt that's in the river. We, we can beat this dead horse time and time again, but uh, I am thankful. You guys are, are making significant progress, okay? Please continue. I mean, the creek is just, it's not that bad today for the first time in a long time. So whatever you're doing, I appreciate it and continue on with it. I don't mean to be the ogre in the middle of all this, but uh, somebody's got to be the bad guy. So uh, I'm speaking up on behalf of us and all the little fish and minnows and snails and everything else. But uh, guys, just come by and look at it. Really, it's uh, y'all have done a good job and just continue on with it. But uh, I signed that complaint just to gain some enforcement, and I, I don't mean to just muddy y'all's water. And I say that figuratively, but. Uh, I know there was a plan, and I know y'all were advised engineering-wise, probably advised by civil, but I just think you got ahead of yourselves for moving way too much dirt than you were stabilizing. So uh, beyond that, just help us out. I mean, you're doing it, and just 
please get better at it. It's, it's coming along. I encourage you guys just to look at it. There's a whole lot. Uh, I hope Mother Nature will fix this. My greatest concern, really, is the chemicals. Uh, what's going to follow if siltations flowing off those hills? Uh, what about all the chemicals from the golf course? That's truly my greatest concern. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Mimi. But, you know, guys, I'm appreciative for what you're doing. Okay. Thank you. I know every one of you. So, you know, just continue on what you're doing. Make this better. Because I'm just glad as, uh, I can be. There's not a bunch of homes up there. So y'all guys carry on until you do a good job, do good work. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. This is Mimi Rose. So Hello, everyone. I do have pictures. Does anyone, am I, am I allowed to give them to y'all? Um, could you state your name and address, please? Yes, it's my name is Mimi Rose. I live at 655 South Harpeth Road, and okay. my property is across from the golf course of Philadelphia. Okay, thank you. Am I allowed to give these? Yeah, I guess, sure, yeah. Okay. Sure. And we've got about 40 pictures. This is two, and the other ones are just like for comparison purposes. Um, and when Scott was requesting you know you, asking, you have yes those are well I want oh, one. Oh, I thought I think you got some no you don't have them okay we got them well Sorry, thanks Tony I, I only have a few Here, that, that's yeah, that you have I've been using them in the emails too so well, I've and seen, I have seen, seen that I have seen that Miss Rogers you can pass that to Bob or Bob probably not there I think they've already seen it I mean it's just yeah um. It's all good? Yeah. Okay. okay. So I want to second what Mr. Summer said. I really appreciate everything that y'all are doing. I know this is a headache for you guys as well. It's a headache for the neighbors. I'm representing the Neighborhood Association, and um, a lot of people on, you know, in that crew are very upset, and um, so I'm just here to speak on their behalf to the ones that I've spoken to about it. Um, so anyway, we have about nine documented incidences. That is one documented incident, and um, they were starting in February 2022. So February, August, October, November, December, and now January. So we're doing the same thing over and over again. We're expecting a different result, in my opinion. Maybe we're making big changes, but they're not working, or I'm not sure what's going on. Um, but, you know, I'm, I have some questions. I'm curious how the last flooding was handled differently um, from a city planning perspective. Um, I'm curious, you know, if the bonds that are set are going to cover what we've got going on. Um, I'm curious why dump trucks are still going down our road, if there's a stop work order in place. And, um, you know, we have erosion control measures in place right now and what's going to happen when those erosion control measures are gone, which, you know, this project is going to be complete. And we all realize that and we're happy for that to be occurring and we're happy for it to be you know, ending. Um, so bottom line is I have been told by many, many people that this is, you know, the gross violation. Um, from the TDEC general construction permit and that no amount of sediment was supposed to leave the site, yet it has, there's dirt, there's sand, there's fill that's left the property. You know, it's um, not just one instance, it's nine. And um, someone needs to be walking the site at least every three days and letting, um, you know, the proper people know what we need to work on. The cross drains, and the culverts are open for Robert Hester. He had them cleaned twice last month. Um, you know, they can't dig the, ditch, the ditches any deeper. They can't do anything different from their standpoint. Um, and they are really deferring to you guys because you guys gave them the permits. Um, so, you know, sediment pollution causes $16 billion worth of damage annually by entering storm drains sediment and storm water will detract from the quality of the drinking water the environment and the wildlife so it's it is a big issue um, not just because of our neighborhood but because of what's going on and um, we care about our community and that's why we're here and you have a minute left so just sorry, wanted, you still have a minute left okay but thank I you, you to know. yeah um, 
that is really all I wanted to say. You know, the environmental future of our waterway should be a concern for all of us, and I appreciate everything that y'all are doing and everything that you guys are doing. And um, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, sir, are you wanting to address some community input? Is that a yes? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, come up and state your name and, and your address. And, My name is Bill Rogers. I'm one, uh, 1660 South Harpeth Road. I'm not going to be near as nice as my neighbors. I do not appreciate anything y'all were doing. I don't think you've given it a great effort. I think it, what they're doing is reactive and not proactive. Uh, we, they have put uh, spoil and illegal spoil areas uh, that were that, that wasted down into our creek and our river. Uh, I have no kudos for these people at all. Uh, so uh, uh, you've all heard me before. I'm not going to get up here and continue to get emotional again. But I'm not happy with this, and uh, and I'm I'm glad my neighbors are. But let me tell you, there's a lot of us neighbors that aren't happy with what these people are doing. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. Was there anybody else on community input? Okay. Thank you all very much. I made We're. Uh, uh, so I'm going to close the community input and resume the meeting. We are we have um, eliminated item one from seven old business. So we're moving on to seven B, Golf Club of DBI LLC grading plan amendments, resubmission of grading plan and updated permit application with a number of requirements here. The first, plans will be revised to meet requirements for the 25-year storm event. Sharon, did you want to, to go through those, or would you like me to read them all before you? I think if we take them individually, it might be more productive okay. um, in explaining. And also, within your packet, Mr. Chairman, and everybody's packet, you have two documents. One is a staff report on inspection. Right. The other is a copy of the uh, Tennessee Department of Environment Conservation. Uh, inspection that occurred on 9 January. It was done as a joint effort between the city and TDAC. Um, the site inspection probably lasted somewhere around three hours. Uh, it was thorough. Um, we looked at all of the improvement areas. We looked at all of the detention work that had been done um, on site. A lot of activity went on the day that we were there. So that's just a brief overview of what we observed on the site that day. So in looking at the suggestions that staff has for the Planning Commission under B, right now we have a two-year storm event set of plans which appears to be insufficient and is documented by TDAC to be insufficient to contain um, stormwater, solar erosion control on the site. We are proposing that they step this set of plans up to a 25-year storm, which is designed to contain a great deal more water. We have also walked the site with the project manager um, and with the engineer once and the project manager once and given them some advice. Put some rip wrap in on those hills to slow the flow of that water down. There are three things they have to worry about, much like the flood ordinance that we've trained you on in the past. Volume of water, the speed with which it descends, Right, and then is it affecting an area that was not previously affected? Those are the three th basic things that we have to make sure they comply with. So we're requesting uh, that they step up a design plan to a 25-year storm event, um, that they then will update their master grading plan to internalize those best practices for a 25-year storm, we are also that um, the revised grading plan will be submitted to the city for engineering and planning review uh, so that we can give them commentary on the plan. All work on the DBI LLC site will cease until the stormwater, cylinder erosion issues are brought into compliance. This is not an arbitrary decision. It's what your storm ordinance, your stormwater ordinance requires. When it's deemed to be insufficient, and not only from staff inspection, from the perspective of the MS4 and solar erosion, 
uh, certification, but also TDAC has deemed them to be insufficient. So at that point, we have to step up our control requirements. So um, stopping work on the site until the issues are, is it, are addressed is within the stormwater ordinance, also within the PUD agreement that they signed. So while we understand that this creates somewhat of a limitation on the project, it would appear to be, given some of the observations um, that I made the other day, that some of the playing hole areas, sand traps, playing holes, are experiencing solar erosion damage as well, the improved sites. So it behooves everybody for these to be in, and they were making a great deal of effort the day we were there. Whether or not those are going to be sufficient, we won't know until it rains again. That's the issue with stormwater control. So we're, we'll see until they submit a plan and they start to address these issues because I want their priority to be stopping the water from leaving the site because that's what's creating the greatest source of friction. So while I understand their desire to move forward with the development, I also understand the most pressing issue for the city and the adjacent neighbors in the roadway below is the disposition of stormwater outside of the footprint of the project. Okay. All suggestions, requirements, and input from the scheduled inspection, which is in your packet, should be included in the plan. Uh, TDAC has some observations that they need to include in the updated plan. Um, it is also our intent to require them to submit a plan for improvements to the road. Obviously, the full four culverts at the location of the spool storage is insufficient. This is, it's failed on four, four inspections that I know of. Two from TDAC, one joint, one from us, where it's failed. So from that perspective, we want them to design something that will either increase the size of the culverts, deepen the ditches on the side of the road. The county is perfectly comfortable with what they're putting on the side of the road adjacent to the county and DBI, that boundary. But obviously the adjacent property owners are less than pleased because it goes across the road in a sheet flow. So I think they, and they have um, on the 15 December uh, inspection that we did, they did state that they would be willing to look at that and put together a plan to assist with that. I think you've just got such a volume of water in a hard rain moving on such a steep slope without being checked or rip wrapped or controlled that it's exceeding the little ditch area, <coughs> excuse me, maybe 18 inches deep for a span and it's just exceeding its ability to absorb that. So then the sheet flows across the road. It also comes down the hill, enters the creek, tumbles across, goes behind um, Mr. Gill's property and Ms. Rose's property. So those are things that can be addressed in the plan. And then once those are submitted, we'd like to sit down with the county. And have you had a chance to touch base with them, with Mr. Bly? Okay. We can't move forward until you give direction, but we'd like to sit down with the county attorney um, and the county executive and Mr. Hester, the road superintendent, and Mr. Wilkinson, the building inspector, and say, look, I understand you may be willing to tolerate this for the period of time, but you have adjacent property owners in the county that are complaining, so it behooves everybody to sit down and work together and figure out a resolution to this problem. Otherwise, the stop has to remain in place because they cannot legally dispose of their water on somebody else's property, period. It's a simple thing. Your stormwater ordinance is very cleanly written, states exactly what happens. At the point that's been determined, they've exceeded uh, the practice, the BMPs that they've put in. We issue a stop until they find some that work. Any questions? So, I mean, on this list of things and going to the 25 year, is that going to prevent, I mean, everything we've seen so far this year is kind of the beginning of what we're going to see, and we're going into spring when everything, this rain's going to get worse and worse and worse. It's not going to get better till probably June or so. So <laughs> I would concur with what um, Commissioner Gross is saying. In this case, you're not the mayor, you're Commissioner Gross. Uh, 
but I concur with you that there may or may not be a complete resolution with the 25-year school design. That's not the only thing I want them to look at. I want them to look at rip wrapping the hill. I want them to remove the spalls from the overhang over the road. I mean, there's a number of things that I would like for them to do that I have discussed uh, with Mr. Smola on more than one occasion, the engineer. So he is comfortable that we can attempt this first. If it exceeds it again, because we've got a couple more periods of intermittent rain in January and February that will give us kind of a look-see. Uh, but we can't require them to design to more than is required to solve the problem. In other words, we have to do this in steps. We can't immediately say you're going to design to a 100-year flood all over the site. We don't have the authority to do that. The state doesn't grant us the authority to do that. You have to take it in incremental steps. Does that make sense? Um, I think there was some conversation about a 10-year storm. I discussed that with uh, Mr. Mahan. I discussed that with the city engineer. 10-year storm plan will not be sufficient to contain this water because of the steepness of slope. So 25 years, what staff is recommending to you? How do we determine whether it's a 10-year or a 25 or a 50 or? Storm? Yeah. Those models are already made, much as they do in a flood area, Lauren. Um, those models and calculations for engineering are already done. They're, they're formulas, so to speak. So when you do a design plan for stormwater disposition or retinage or control, you have to use a particular formula, use those calculations for the flow and the rate because they're already prescribed. It's a standard engineering practice. So they've exceeded currently what the flow was established or expected That's to correct. be. And so we're going to the next step. That's correct. And meanwhile, those people that are being impacted by this are going to have to endure the step-by-step -step process should the 25 year. I'm not suggesting that it won't right. be effective. If it does, there's a couple of observations I need to make. Um, designing it to a 25-year storm covers part of the issue. Direction from this planning commission that staff um, more than suggest, but require them to do some rip wrapping on the slopes to remove some of the spoles that are at the edge of the property because that's creating some of the runoff, the disposition okay. of spoles okay. and sand and large rocks. So we and say other slow things. the that's flow. So and it's a multi prone approach. Set it up to be able to that's handle correct. flow once we've slowed it down to prevent it happening in the future. That's correct. And also scaling back the things that are stored in that area that shouldn't be, uh, ditching sufficiently. Uh, having a detention area on the back side of that project where it butts to the county because mm -hmm. there isn't any now before it leaves the site. Uh, the trench that they did in a short period of time appears to be effective. It is holding water. It's simply not long enough. It doesn't go far enough. It doesn't go deep enough because the water just goes around it. So those practices can be implemented. There is also seeding straw and matting, which they have rolled out acres and acres and acres of it, but when it's freezing, doesn't take, doesn't grow. When it's warm and it rains a lot, it slips. So, you know, it, it has to have time to take root in order to see the results of that. So I'm not suggesting that anybody tolerate anything. No, I'm simply no, I, saying I, there is a process that. prescribed in our ordinance by which we incrementally raise the bar for what's required, and that's what we're asking the planning commission <coughs> to do. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions at this point from the commission? Okay. Okay. Um, so, are there any representatives at this point from uh, Golf Club of PBI that want to uh, address the commission for any reason? Don't have to. Um, hello, my name is Robert West, and. Let's just, for purposes of this, say I'm the secretary of the Golf Club of DBI LLC. <clears throat> I wanted to, um, you know, communicate a couple things. Um, first is, um, you know, our project is committed to. Um, I'm going to look at my notes so I get it all here. <clears throat> and committed to and willing to build more robust stormwater erosion and sediment control measures. Um, you know, so that's not problematic for us. We do not want any breach on the neighbors. We're, um, you know, we have a very good working relationship with the city engineer and the city planner. 
Um, and while we don't want to be stopped, um, you know, we are ready and willing to, you know, work with the, the city to solve the problems. Um, I go even farther than that, something that came up is not in your recommendations. Um, some of you might know we've engaged David Jackson, um, he's a, um, a water control expert, um, and we are also committed to cleaning up where there has been issues, and um, I, I assure you David Jackson is um, you know, extremely knowledgeable working with TDEC. Um, to secure the proper permits to go into the blue line streams and things of that nature to, to solve the fixed problems that we've caused. Um, I guess, um, apologize for my phone. Um, you know, our concern here is just the process, and, um, and, and again, we're very committed to solving the problem. Um, I think some of the community, I think I could say some of the community comments were, we want to get this done, and we feel that when this project is done, that will solve um, some of the problems. I, I would say that. Um, Great, I'm obviously um, biased in my comment there, but our goal is to get this project sodded with growing grass that's going to stabilize um, the project site. Um, and again, Self-servingly, I'll admit, um, my goal in speaking to you right now is to get a process where we can get going again to affect that. Um, and again, it's not problematic for us to build more robust erosion, stormwater, and sediment control measures. Um, we just want to know how to get from here to back to working and, um, and, and to get the you know, project finished for black favor. My last comment is, um, and again this is kind of technical, currently the under the PUD I believe there are four um, work permits um, and um, we, you know, the stop work order our understanding is, is it applicable to all four work permits. Um, the issue at hand is primarily related to one work permit and sort of like a you know a sequence of events um, the three other work permits primarily relate to irrigating the site and frankly to get grass growing and our concern is we do not believe those permits have caused any impact on the environment or our neighbors and if we stop work on those right now with no clear path forward it just slows down on our ability to stabilize the site sometime later this year. Um, the last comment I have, and I'm sorry to keep rambling, is I do have a schedule of what we feel this project looks like from a timeline. I'm happy to share that with the, the commissioners and the community if you think that would be helpful. Our true goal is to be completely finished grassing in July of 2023 and be de uh, mobilizing the site in August of 2023. And again, you know, um, that's obviously subject to delays. And, you know, and again, we're, we're here committed to solving the problem, but, you know, I just wanted to, you know, voice that um, in some respects we feel delays to portions of the project that aren't impacting stormwater or sediment and erosion control issues are going to ultimately have ripple effects down the line later in the year. And, you know, so respectfully, we just, we're just looking for a pathway forward where we can get this project done and get out of the neighbor's hair. And when we say out of the neighbor's hair, I want to reemphasize that you know our goal is, and we are committed to, you know, fixing problems that we've caused, and we feel we've hired the right people to do that. Thank you. Does anybody here have questions? Yeah, so, I have a question. You, how, yes. much of the, how much of the uh, 18 holes have been signed so, and seeded so far? So of the 18 holes, holes. 18, one through eight are grassed, um, in parentheses, excluding staging areas um, for um, the access bridge. Um, so essentially, I would argue eight, nine of the 18 holes are basically finished. And is it on the same side as the stormwater issues on the back side of the? I, I'm, not, I'm not going to speak 
where I might get myself in trouble. I think these are primarily on the Brush Creek watershed side, what has been completed. What hasn't been completed, I would argue, are you know, what's impacting the yeah. South Harbor and Harpeth watershed. And he's, right. The engineer here, Jeff Hooper, is much more able to speak to the specifics of the project. Commissioner Hargis, that's absolutely correct. So um, the area that we have open now that we're working on is the area that's adjacent to uh, right. South Harbor Road and 18 through um, 8, as Ms. West suggested is, is back more towards the Gulf of Tennessee. So what you're requesting then is the permission to go ahead and finish the grassing at the same time you're working on the stormwater? I think a little more nuanced than that. Um, okay. We have a water intake structure, a bridge structure, um, and it's a little more complicated, but basically a bridge and a pipe that we want to continue working on so that we can water that grass. Right now, uh, most grasses are dormant or not growing, as um, um, uh, City Planner uh, Armstrong mentioned in one of her comments. Um, I think, and again, the, the grassing commences in earnest in um, maybe late March, is that correct? So we're trying to get everything prepared so that once the site, once the site can handle the grass, once the grass will start to germinate, we're putting it down as fast as we can to stabilize the site. Okay, the, the bridge, the access bridge uh, you're talking about, did that replace the construction entrance? Ultimately, we're again we're going to decommission the construction entrance, and that will be the access maintenance access to the site. Long term, that's correct. Yes, sir. Other questions? Should we determine that it would be okay to uh, allow three of the work permits to go forward? What's the impetus for you all? To go ahead and take care of the erosion problem while you can continue working effectively while we're still dealing with the erosion issues that are affecting the people in the community. So I'm not going to commit to my team, but I'll say in other jurisdictions where I have projects such as this, when there's an issue, we're oftentimes said there's an issue, you have a period of time to resolve that. If you do not resolve that, you, you, you know, the, the matter will be escalated. Right, I understand you're asking for a path forward. Right. I'm just wondering whether we should give you a path forward and the permits or just give you a path forward and then let you earn the permits. Well, well I mean, I, I feel like the path forward is kind of, we have given you a path forward. I mean, it may not be the path you like, but it is a path forward. I, I don't see how it's not. And I didn't understand. I have to be perfectly honest with you and Jeff, the more technical minded people, I didn't know if that meant that it sounds like, from my listening, and Mrs. Armstrong, you correct me if I'm wrong, sounds like we develop these plans, we come to you, um, it goes back to the Planning Commission, and then gets approved. Is that how you had seen it? All plan and changes to plans have to come to them by state statute. Right. Can I address him directly? Sure, please. Or the Planning Commission, by state statute, right. any change in that has to go back to them. Um, we don't have any control over that, but with, before that process comes to them, it goes to the city engineer for review and comment and revision if required. Um, to address what Ms. Hill um, raised an issue, we issued a stop in, obviously in December. Some efforts were made on site, but most of that energy was directed towards the playing holes. I toured the, the entire site rode and walked the entire site with T-Day. It took us three hours to get through it. So their mechanism that they use in order to encourage you to address the issue on the ground is to stop all activity. And while I understand that the intake is a permit, I understand the bridge and the pond are a permit, I understand that the grassing and the other areas and the playing holes are a permit. All of them require activity that goes in and out of that side on South Harpeth Road because none of it's directed through the Golf Club of Tennessee, which increases the issues on the road, increases the runoff, requires the moving and storage of materials. So we've given suggestions. It's time we <coughs> formalize them. You need to rip wrap going down the hills because obviously it's road map <coughs> check. The soil and erosion fences that were on the location before the last storm, in between November 29th and the storm that occurred 
um, last weekend. Those silt fences propped back up had no significant impact on the ability to contain the water. So they're breaching the fences in multiple locations. The ditch took care of some runoff over onto the road in the area where the ditch was dug. But when it stops <coughs> after 50 feet or so, it <coughs> goes around and then goes off the hill. So for us, submission of plans can be, they have the authority to allow the engineer and the planner to review the plans and then cut you loose. But that's up to them. But we don't have any evidence right this second that what has been placed is effective. And that's it's, it boils down to real simple. Water runs downhill. If it runs downhill unchecked, it creates issues on the way down. So until that is addressed, turning the empty loose on the other permits will refocus their energy in those areas would be my assumption as Ms. Hill pointed out, and lessen their desire to address the issue adjacent to the road. Now that can always come back to the Planning Commission for renegotiation at a later date, but right now the staff recommendation is that these measures be required and reviewed by the city engineer and the planner. And if we see a change in what they contain and control, and a lessening of the issues that they create off-site. So that's the key <coughs> for the Planning Commission to understand. You can't dispose of your water off-site unless it's naturally occurring, which this is not. It's been disturbed. All 243.5 acres of it. So staff recommendation would be to adopt these measures, allow them to move forward with submitting that, <coughs> we'll give them a permit to install them once they're approved, and by approval, they have to come back to them for inclusion in the PUD. They're, they're going to change the PUD and the development plan that have already been submitted because these plans are be different than the grading plan that was submitted before. That requires their approval. So staff has the ability, these are construction plans. We have the ability to approve construction plans, but as they intersect with the PUD, this body makes that recommendation. So does that clarify that statement for you? Okay. It was a great, and I apologize. I'm I've walked the site, and I'm about as familiar. I I, I I don't I didn't quite get all what we need to do, but we have people who know how to do that. So I was almost as confused as you were when that was going on. Um, you know, the only comment I would make was each one of these projects um, are independent contractors. We have a contractor building a bridge that's different from the contractor building the golf course, which is different from the contractor building the irrigation um, pumping station. They all have separate contracts and, you know, they don't share labor. So um, to, I would only say that to assuage your concerns that you know, in some respects, I don't have to walk and chew gum at the same time because I've, we've hired different people to do different tasks at the same time. Um, but again, um, I just wanted to clarify that, that, you know, that might assuage some of your concerns that we can't. We would devote all of our energy to what we currently have a permit for. Um, and obviously, I, you know, just to take that full circle, I, I think that would reflect poorly on us in front of this board if we kept coming back to you with these types of issues. So timeline wise, we sit here now, January the 11th, 11th. Um, and you can't start seeding anyway or, or laying sod until March, end of March? March. Okay. So is that enough time for you to address all the uh, suggestions that that Sharon has about riprap and you know redirecting the flow to give you enough time to be able to start on time to put grass down. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me to hope up putting the grass down. If that's going to that's going to absorb some of the water that's running off down the hill. Um, since the wrong half of it is completed, that's where the problem is. It seems to me like to get the grass down would be a pretty high priority. Sharon. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm not understanding it properly. I don't disagree with what you're saying, Mr. Hargis, and I don't disagree with what he's saying by sitting and, and grassing. However, in this particular time of the year, you can see it all you want. It's just not going to come up. Well, yeah. So right well, now, there's other that, I'm, I'm, What I'm asking about is, is the timeline to address 
the issues that are going to really impact where the water's crossing the road down there. Right. Is there enough time for them to execute that in time to start the grass on time? Because if you delay the grass, you're worsening the problem. It looks right. to me like logically. Now, I'm no expert. I'm certainly not an engineer, uh, and you you know much more about this than I do. But my 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 question is. Does it make sense to hold up something that's going to help stem the flow of water? That doesn't make a lot of logical sense. If I may, the stop work order that was issued does not does not stop work for any soil erosion or storm water controls. Does not. Grassing is a part of that. Grassing and seeding is a part of that uh, process. What the stop is for is to redirect the focus and the energy of the applicant to the areas where the water is leaving the site until that problem is cured so that we are not displacing water across the road on private property from a permit that the city's issued. Mm -hmm. So is there sufficient time? I've always known their engineer to be somewhat responsive and capable of doing these things. They've hired additional experts to bring on board. I don't see an issue with having this done. My desire would be to have these plans submitted, vetted within the next week, and then implemented because I want them to start rather than on the interior right. where it only affects this golf course. I want them to start and focus their efforts at the edge of that roadway backwards so that it's not hampering the people that live across the road. Okay. Okay. Effectively, that makes sense to everybody. The problem. Let's fix it, and then we can all move forward. Yes, ma'am. And uh, pardon me for interrupting. My name is Andy Howell. I'm the project manager for the Golf Club of DBI. Uh, I, I just want to try to say this is a little clearer than what I'm hearing um, from my own guys. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we've got WIC construction building the pump house. We've got pro pumps and controls doing the water intakes that goes through the Doris property onto the Golf Club DBI, and then we've got Bell Construction building the bridge. The, the water comes from the Harpeth to the lakes to the pump house, and, ha and, and the bridge, while the bridge is important to us for golf course maintenance, it's also a water delivery device because the, the piping to get the irrigation up the hill has to attach to the bridge. We've got about 120 days worth of work to do on those projects before we can start pumping water at the top of the hill. And we can't grow grass until we've got, until we've got water. So, um, while I, I understand you have a tremendous amount of leverage with us by stopping the construction of the golf course, the cost to us is somewhere between I don't want to exaggerate this, but it's at least $50,000 a week for us to be stopped. And if that, that is a tremendous amount of leverage. So um, when R Robert speaks for Mr. Ingram, when Robert says we're going to fix it, no, don't, don't listen to me, listen to Robert. But, but fix the, getting the water from the harbor up to the golf course is absolutely in the critical path. And if we're not able to get that water in about 120 days, then it will slow down getting grass up on top of the hill and, and getting the site stabilized. So that's just that's just a, a fact. Did you not say that the stop was issued in December? We issued the first stop in December. They provided a remediation plan in that meeting. Uh, the stop was lifted. And then we issued, we reissued because the measures that were put in place between the December 15th inspection and the January 6th ride by and the January 9th inspection failed again. Because the work was being done on getting the seating and, and the infrastructure taken care of and not necessarily focused on resolving the issues that were at hand. That is correct. Is that correct? That is correct. Is that correct? No, ma'am. Uh, we spent, I mean, Blake helped me with this, but we spent several hundred thousand dollars on additional erosion control over the last 30 to 45 days. And, and as I've said, and I'm being candid about this, the three contractors that are working on the other side of Brush Creek to get the water up the hill are not involved 
in the golf course construction at all. So anything that's going on at the golf course is a whole different team and, and not involved in getting water from the Harpeth to the pump house and up the bridge to the top of the hill. So. If I may address that um, briefly, Mr. Chair. Yes. There have been a number of silt fences and other measures installed. The issue is they're inappropriate for the area that they're located in. When you install a silt fence, plastic stakes in the ground that are very steep slope, and water rolls down that slope at a certain speed, it just blows under the silt fence. So the silt fence is really not addressing the problem. While I don't doubt that they've spent money, what they've done has not effectively reduced the amount of runoff. There are three ways to reduce that runoff. Dig a trench and divert the water somewhere else. I see Mr. Hart is shaking his head. This is Construction 101. Rip wrap it so you slow it down so it's not hitting the bottom of the hole nearly as quickly. And then install some sort of stabilizing material grass. Now there are some grass mats that have installed that I'm seeing green on because it's been kind of warm lately. Those are temporary and meant to hold the ground until it's sod. But none of these have, between the 15th of December and the inspection on the 9th of January, effectively controlled the runoff. And for, from the perspective of the Planning Commission and the town, your stormwater order, ordinance is quite bluntly written by your previous attorney for a reason, I guess. After the flood, you don't meet the requirements, you issue a stop until the plan comes forward to address the issues. We gave these same suggestions for rip wrapping, diversion, other things. Uh, in my last visit, Blake asked me, well, you know, how do you control water from the top of a ridge that's this steep? And I said, you know, I'm not an engineer, but when it's this steep, it's going to roll way quicker than it would on a gently sloping terrain, and that's an engineering question. So my advice would be to have the engineer address it, because frankly, whether it's a 25-year storm design, 50 or 100, Miss Hill, until the water stops flowing where it shouldn't go, really is irrelevant. It's about controlling the water. Right. Now, at the top of that location above the road, there are a couple of things that can be done. They can scale back the spools that are being stored there that shouldn't be because they're hanging over the edge of the road and causing kind of a waterfall effect on the road. They can rip wrap and they can ditch and divert. Those are things they can do because they're not in the project playing whole area back there. So, so um, Sharon, just for me to kind of catch up, sorry. Right, that's okay. This. okay. It sounds like to lift the stop work order, if I'm looking at item 7B, um, yes, sir. the path forward, it sounds like it is the, the different amended plans being submitted Correct. and approved, and bringing the soil and erosion issues into compliance. That's correct. Is that are those basically the two items? I mean, I know they're listed in greater detail here, but are those basically those the two Those are basically items? the two items, and they have the ability, and I know it's cumbersome for people to come back every month, but we have no way of knowing how effective these measures are going to be until a period of time passes after they've been installed. And again, no commentary. If it was my project, and I was the project manager, I'd be focused on the area of development not the back end of the project where there's storage and access. So while I understand that desire, I also understand the trucks and the equipment and the personnel moving it out of there are contributing to the problem. So we need to get a handle on that back area first. So how can we come up with what you say, well, we all know that those are the steps that need to be made. Right. Without having to wait until another planning commission meeting can we build in to that some kind of an assessment along the way? You take the steps, you do the things that you feel that are going to bring it into compliance. At some point, we have an engineer go check it out, and if the engineer says, okay, then we can go ahead and say we will contingent upon that 
allow the permits to go forward. We can, and that is the desire of the developer. Uh, it's not our, our desire to hold them up. It no, simply no, it's not. It's not. The desire is to solve the problem. It really creates a burden for everybody involved. So right now, they can submit plans. The engineer can vet them. And from those plans, they can install install those BMPs and those best management practices, which are what BMPs for those of you who don't have to listen to all of the stuff the state puts out. Uh, once they install those, they rip wrap. They kind of get some stabilization to the area then staff has the ability to say, okay, in this area where you're not hampering solar erosion, go forth and proceed on, right? But right now, because there's so much activity in so many different places, all of it directed towards the creek, either on one side, Brush Creek, or on the other, adjacent to Mr. Summers, this position one side or the other, we can't determine what's causing the most problem. There's so much activity for four different permits going on at one time. It seems to me that the, yes, sir. the problem that we really face is that the developers, the contractors and all, have done nothing <coughs> to satisfy the local people or to be out here really honest in getting it done. And they need to do it and I know damn well they're capable of it. So I, I don't understand why we're spending all this time on it. I, Somewhat agree with you, Mr. Campbell. The path is laid out in the agenda. Yes. The adoption of this will then be put in writing. The engineer will subscribe to them the things they need to submit. That will be done. Staff will review it so they can start implementing it. I don't want to sit on it for a month either. But I also don't want them to focus on just the development and not focus on the issue that not only the property owners are dealing with, the county's dealing with, the we're dealing with. There has to be a mitigated middle here somewhere. I've, I've been dealing with these issues since 1972. Yes, sir. That tells you how old I am. And, I, you know, I've fought with the Corps, I've sued the Corps of Engineers successfully a couple of times, you know. And it's just a matter of, of all, everybody coming together and working on it. And I think that y'all, the developer, can do a better job of satisfying their needs and dealing with the issues right up front, get it done, and get it behind you. So I agree. Mm -hmm. How long will it take to get the, the pump house and the water up to grow the grass that you I would said, like to plant in March? We've got about 120 days. Okay. Uh, and if, if, we can't, if we can't get it up and going, we can't start grassing again. I would hazard a guess, Mr. Hargis, if they focus the energy that I saw on site the other day in my three-hour walk on addressing these issues within a plant scope, they could be in and out in 30 days with getting this done, which would not hamper them. If there's progress every single time it rains, I go over there. Why? Because people are being hampered by it. They're being damaged by it. They're outside of compliance with TDAC. They're outside of compliance with us. So I go. And I, okay, did that work? No. So something has to be put in place to control the flow of water. It's real simple. While it's an imposition, I understand it. This is the development they chose and the path they chose. We're trying to be cooperative. But turning them loose, again, completely, in my opinion, is going to replicate the same situation that, speaking to your concern, that we have today. It's just going to, history's going to repeat. Well, I think what I was questioning here with you, that. I think my question is, on a path forward, if they focus their attention immediately on riprap and flood control on the on the site that you're most worried about, the back side of that hill that goes down to the to the South Harpeth Road, and they make progress on that, okay? What I'm thinking is we have one of these meetings a month. So it's got to come back to us before anything can be stop lifted. Is there a way to do it where you could give them a green light if they're making enough progress on the on the water? That's at the control pleasure of this to plant the commission. grass and water the grass. I mean, to me, that is the long term solution to this: is get the ground covered. It's part of the solution. It's part of it, right? Yeah, it's what part I'm of saying solution. though is if we stop that and we don't plant grass until June. I don't disagree with that, but I don't have that authority. 
I can put the stop on. This mm -hmm. body has to take it off. So at that point, I would think that you would need to adopt something within this stream that's being requested in item B, mm -hmm. one through F, yeah. that with the approval of the city planner and the city engineer, stop could be lifted in areas. If the problem resurfaces, so essentially, just we back. adopted this plan with the stipulation that upon completing this uh, to the satisfaction of the city planner and the city engineer, they can proceed. Right. right. That, yeah, that's, 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 that's what I was saying as well. I see, I was stretch yeah. it to the point where we say we're going to stop everything this until stack. March, and then right. then we still got to get water up on top to water the grass that we're going to that they're going to plant, you know. Um, but at least at that point, there will be sufficient measures in place yeah, when you start watering and won't run off the property. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. So I'm just saying that we do the two things, solve the problem. and we do the two things simultaneously so that it gets at the root problem, because part of the root problem is there's no grass on those eight holes that are above that ridge. Well, I think that's part, part of the problem. Nine. They're not seeding yet. They're I mean, not let's, seeding. Let's, let's address what the issue is, mm -hmm. and then let's put the, with approval of the city planner and the engineer, we can lift the stoppage on the other permits, that makes assuming that they sense. have taken the steps that need that exactly. satisfy yeah. the needs of the community and the I city. I can support that. that okay. Makes, that makes sense. Let's do that. I'm, Somebody needs to, to put that in the form of a motion to amend this request. So moved. <laughs> Somebody needs to second it? Second. And then you need to take a vote to amend it first, and then you need, if this strategy works for you, we vote. And the, the amendment we're talking about is that that approval that we are essentially delegating approval to lift the stop order um, to the city planner and engineer. Specific to it being productive in addressing the violations on the ground. Yeah. Once they right with the approval yeah. of, addresses um, the issues that are identified. Right. We have two reports here: one from TDAC and one from staff. So it's, it's real simple to yeah. what the yeah, issues are. I don't think anybody's against that. I mean, no, I, think no. the, I think it sounds like the, the so, board is in agreement that that needs to be done first and, and quickly. Okay, so uh, absolutely. I just don't want to. I don't want to timeline this thing out to where we have to sit back in a meeting again to list off. In November and say, okay, now you can start uh, planning grass. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. 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 My whole no, we don't, none of us want to do that. Yeah. yeah. All right. We have a motion, a second on the floor. Okay. And I have a question on clarification. Yes, sir. Are we under item B1. Yes, sir. Are we just talking about B1 or are we also talking about B2 or is that separate? No, we are only talking, talking about, about B1. B1. Okay. That's All correct. right. Thank you. Um, okay. Are there any other questions or comments from the Planning Commission? All right. So you heard the motion in the second. For an amendment. For an amendment to the. For an amendment to item B1. And the amendment would be with approval of the city planner and engineer, they can lift the work stop order right. and proceed given that there is adequate progress. Right? Yes. Okay. So adequate is a relatively simple term to define. Okay. All right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes. Now, next motion I would like to request is that you, with the amendment, adopt all of the suggestions for the golf club dbi llc project moving forward in section 1a through g because g was the amended right okay so move second see any questions or comments on that one okay all in favor aye, aye. 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 any opposed okay that motion passes now, I want to address briefly two. Two is an as built for the members of the golf club who had questions about how we're going to submit the exhibits and things to update the PUD. I am a fan of as built. You can tell me you're going to do anything with no disrespect to them. You can tell me anything, but I want to see what you did. So when you get ready to update the exhibits to a project this large, you need to give me the as built and tell me what you actually did and you can update your master plan until you get that. That can come back at their leisure. We don't drive that train. They submit, right? They're required to amend the PUD, but the timeline and time frame in which they do it depends on when they file the application to do so. So that in no way inhibits any activity they do. 
but by the time we reach the end of this project, that PUD agreement has to be completely updated with all exhibits so that when that document is put to bed, it contains everything that we need. So that's just an update for you on that. Inspection report is in your packet for item three. Uh, you have the TDAC inspection report and the, you also have um, staff report. And now we come to the dreaded number four. Okay. All right, so item four, so these were information. Okay. Right, except for number four, which is actually. Right, number so four. under B4, appointment of site monitor, planning commission appointment of site monitor for the golf club of Tennessee and the golf club of DBI LLC. And so I'll ask. Uh, Sharon, or do you have any recommendations on that? I am reluctant uh, to make a recommendation. Okay. Uh, I will leave this at the discretion of the Planning Commission. Um, the process that we have established now for site monitoring needs to be officially done, or you need to select someone else to do the site monitoring. The learning curve for this project is significant. So. Okay, so the, the nature of this role, I mean, is this a contractor, is this a volunteer, is this a, what, what, kind, what kind of role is this? The role has to be someone from the city because we, have, we are the only body, someone who serves the city because they have the ability to put it on an agenda and report the results to you. If you think back some time ago to the McPherson project and how that worked in the site monitoring process, that was done. That is a duty that um, I largely held and shared with the city manager when I could not make it to the site uh, to inspect the lift. It allowed us to remove all the materials that should not have been deposited on that site. It also allowed us to monitor the compacting that was necessary on that site and to monitor the environmental reports to make sure that the water was going to remain clean. So that was the process then. So, did we have a person other than you? <laughs> I don't think we do. I, I, I suggest that we appoint the city planner, Sharon Armstrong, to be the site monitor for this project. I mean, obviously, second knows better than... Well, just a minute. Um, does anybody else have any other recommendations? It's what about John? I would think the logistics of asking Sharon <laughs> would be somewhat challenging because of, she doesn't live here. And, Correct. Yeah. I, if if I might sure. interject, I would be happy to be an alternate and work in Sharon's stead. Um, but uh, as far as the in-depth knowledge needed on a week-to-week -week or bi-weekly basis, uh, she's, a, she's certainly more qualified than I am, but I could certainly work um, along with her in certain situations when she's unable to be in town, um, could do uh, either through FaceTime or through the telephone, so I would know exactly what um, needs to be looked at at any given moment. Okay, I, think that, I think it would be kind of difficult. I don't know that anyone we have anyone else that has the qualifications yeah. to, to do it. Unfortunately, I mean, John is a man of many talents, but I don't know that that this would fall into those talents right. to the degree that that's maybe needed in a situation like this okay. of this magnitude. Is there an inspection schedule, here? There is not. TDEC has an inspection schedule. I'll be uh, happy to uh, put one together. I want to finish this comment. Yeah. So, just, if Mike just asked a question, I want to finish that answer. Go ahead, Karen. I'm mean, Sharon. Um, is there an inspection, inspection schedule? schedule. Yeah. It, it's, all, it's really site dependent, Mr. Hargis. Um, okay. If your site is progressing and in a way that's solving the problem or the issue, um, as we did with Mr. McPherson, we lessened the number of inspections. Um, there was so it's kind of at your discretion. Now. That's what I was asking. Right. So yeah. that if there's not a need, but I would hazard a guess that at a minimum, after every significant rain, 
yeah. the sites kind of need to be visited. That's pretty much what the rule of thumb is for those types of inspections. Every time you get a hard rain, you go look and see what happened. Okay. Yeah. We're here for the planning commission meeting. We're here probably two, three times a month on average anyway for other business. Okay. So um, while I agree with you, it is a little bit of a drive. Um, John and I managed to share this responsibility and with him functioning as a stand-in for almost two and a half years with Pearson side. Okay, thank you. Mr. West, you had a... I was just going to propose uh, the project is having to reimburse the town for civil, carpet civil, which I think is the town's engineering firm, to make those site visits. You, do you think volunteer from the civilian world? I, I think in terms of expertise I, I, and, and the amount of training Sharon's had to include in erosion control, um, we're, we're really wanting a, a high level of expertise involved in this from within the city. So, um, If there is a need for an engineer to attend, I will contact Carpet Civil and have that done. Um, they already get passed through for all the activities that um, come with that engineering service anyway. So that proffer is established by ordinance uh, rather than offer. So if it, trust me, if I get above my pay grade, somebody will know. You know I'll ask for assistance. Okay, but with, with Mr. West's offer to reimburse, should we have to bring in Harpeth Civil, would we want to accept that offer that they would reimburse? It's already, already established by It's already, already established? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So. Do we have uh, a motion on this? Or you I believe we've got a motion and a second. We do. Okay. I, I, just go ahead. All right. I made the motion. Tony made the second. Okay. I missed that. <laughs> Tony right. made the motion. Tony made the second. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> all in favor of appointing um, our city planner as the site monitor with, with our city manager serving as a backup uh, as needed. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So there we go. I want to take this opportunity. We, we, I think we've made some progress here, but I want the local folks, you people that stood up and bid, get after the Cheatham County government to do their damn job. They don't do anything. They have let you're us, the cause of the problem. They've let us know that you're liable. I'm the cause. How am I the cause? We have right. stop. You're the, you're the one that pays for them to build this thing to run the water down on our road. Okay. Um, All right. Not Cheatham County, sir. It's your problem. We're stopping that discussion. All right. Okay. Um, item C. <laughs> C. Yes, the Willows. 129, okay, so DBI, yeah, please, welcome to leave, thank you. Um, if anybody was here just for the DBI discussion, you're welcome to leave before we go to the next item. Can, can you take a question from Raleigh? No, sir, no. we're going to continue with the agenda. Okay. David? <laughs> Good to see you. All right. Item 7C is the Willows 129 East Kingston Springs Road Sewer Connection TDOT. So, Attorney Planner report to the Planning Commission regarding permit requirements for the sewer connection. I'm going to make this mercifully brief, if we can. The McPherson Project, as you know, is a planned unit development with all utilities, infrastructure, and build-out being private. Absolutely no encumbrance to the city. We don't want to maintain their sewer, their water, any of that. Of course, we can't maintain the water. That's been shared with the applicant from day one. As a matter of fact, state statute prohibits you from spending taxpayer money to provide services when they're private development. So, they need to go under TDOT's road to connect to our sewer line. So we received a request from the developer that the city fill out an application and accept <coughs> maintenance and responsibility for their service line. I said, no, <laughs> why would we do that? It's their service line. We're responsible for our main line, but we're not responsible for anything under your road or on their property. So they sent me their rules 
and regulations and we kind of had a discussion back in two after several days where they said, no, no, that's not the way we always do it. It's irrelevant how you do it. I see Tony. Mr. Campbell is smiling. Mr. Campbell and I have been to TDOT on a number of occasions together. Uh, I had the city attorney review their rules and regulations and I'll let her share with you uh, her thoughts on that. Sure. Their rules and regulations, uh, interestingly enough, um, define, let me back up for a second, anytime you have a utility that operates within a right-of-way of a state highway, right-of-way including the sides or under, um, they have rules and regulations that allow for utilities to do that because obviously it behooves us all to have water and electricity and everything and the ability to drive back and forth between places. Their definition of utilities within their own uh, rules and regs contemplate not only municipalities or utilities like what we think of as Second South Cheatham, but individuals and private corporations. They further have an Appendix 6 to their rules and regulations, uh, which is basically a license agreement um, that allow them to license a private individual to put utilities within TDOT right-of-ways because they, they kind of boils down to property rights. Now, this is TDOT spot, you can't put anything in their spot without their permission, so that's what the license would be. So um, Sharon and I intend to push back on TDOT and remind them uh, that their own rules and regs do contemplate private uh, utility lines going into right-of-way of the state highway. Uh, and to allow it to, them to continue, or developer to continue that placement and that responsibility with TDOT rather than trying to put that on the town's back. And to further that discussion briefly, um, <clears throat> we have explained to TDOT that we don't own step tanks on that development. We don't own anything on that development. And it's not our desire to own anything on that development. And that sewer system that they proposed to install was reviewed, the plan, and approved by TDAC, not the city. So it's their sewer system. And while the impact, we still treat the sewage when it meets our main line. We're just not responsible for maintaining under the state's road if something happens where we have to keep a bond in perpetuity and renew it forever in the day for someone else's work. So this is something that's in progress at this right. point? This, this, is, this is informational only. Okay. No, no so basically motion. the answer to their question is no, we're not going to take ownership of that. that that's correct. It. We're not filing your okay. we're not filing your application. We're not signing it. <coughs> we're certainly not posting a maintenance bond with state to take care of your private sewer. It's okay. like uh, Hidden Lake Resorts outside of Ashton City, private. Same situation here. But when our sewer system treats their sewage, then we will build them accordingly. That's correct. I mean, it's... Well, we should. I'm just making yeah, sure. It, it gets to our line. Once sewer it gets to our sewer, our main sewer line, yeah, we just don't want to inherit their cost and pass them along to the taxpayer to pay for their development. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, item 8A, new business. Um, do we need to vote on that at all? We don't do it. Excuse me. I was just need to Okay, 121B Lyman Hills Road has submitted a, an amended site plan. It is in your packet. The um, original conversation that I had with the contractor indicated that they wanted to put a beer cave uh, at the back of the property where the liquor store side is, which is 121B, um, but it was to serve the convenience store, which we can't do. The convenience store is a separate business, separate entity. Then I was informed today that Martha Brooke had had a conversation with several people, and, and they now say that they're going to get a beer license at the liquor store location. Yeah. So they have a beer license at the convenience store side. So they're going to pursue a beer license at the liquor store location as well, which the state allows. They permit beer and liquor to be sold in the same location. So my heartburn with this site plan was you can't come into the liquor store and get your beer and then take it over there to the convenience stores to stock your cooler. They have to be separated because of the way licensing runs. There's 
Yeah, exactly. The, the state statute, as you all remember, or some of you on the commission know this, but Planning Commission is not as familiar. Beer, sale of beer uh, for off-premises consumption, or on-premises for that matter, is done through the town, through the right. beer board. Sell of liquor, either by the drink or for off-premises consumption. That's wholly I'm reserved for the state. ABC, correct. Um, if you get a license to sell beer through a liquor store, I'm sorry, to sell liquor through a liquor store, then you also are able to sell beer. And that is, and the enforcement of that is retained actually by the ABC. You know, they're, they're pretty strict about premises, so again, that's where we had our whole issue. So, so long as this cooler is being used solely to store the beer that is purchased by the liquor store and sold at the liquor store cash register and goes out the front door of the liquor store, we should be fine. Which building is this? It's, it's the uh, market. Snowco. Snowco. Oh, okay. Snow Snow yeah. okay. Yeah. So the left side is the convenience store, right. you're facing the front elevation, right. right side is proposed to be the liquor There's store. There's a hard wall between them, correct? Pardon? There's a hard wall between them. There is. And there's a door also, but the state also sent us an opinion. Uh, I don't believe you had been placed on the Planning Commission at that point yet, but they sent us a legal opinion that they're allowed to have that connection between the two. That door, as long as it's locked and it's only used for employees to go to the potty on the other side. But as an advisory, um, with your discretion, I'm going to put a note in the permit file if that building ever sells you know, to some other owner. A bathroom will have to be put in 121B where the liquor store is because they won't have they're not in the same ownership for use of the potty on the on the left. Okay. So with that we are requesting approval. That's been the hold up for this. So thing. move. Second. Okay. Any, any other questions or comments on this one? All right, all in favor? Uh, all right. Any opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Thank you. Joe Bob Sanders even leave. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Good job. Glad to be your beer representative. <laughs> okay. Don't forget Every to leave that case of big light up on the steps, okay? <laughs> Item eight. Choking. Item eight B is six oh eight Mount Pleasant Road plat oh. revision. Nothing to report not been presented. This is an issue that would have come to you that's a result of um, a code enforcement issue for the property. The applicant was advised that he needed to move the property line in order to accommodate the slab that he poured. He was directed to do so. He did not. So we still don't have it. It will go back into court where I assume it will either be deferred, continued, discussed so all, all we're okay. letting you know is when it ever does appear it has to come here because it is a revision to apply okay thank you you're welcome um, item 8c 132 petro road site plan revision water lines staff uh, recognized a gap in a process that we wanted to discuss briefly with you Usually when someone is doing water lines for fire suppression or fire service to a commercial building, it's a new location. In this case, with the Punjabi restaurant, it was not. So they never coordinated with Second South Cheatham. They started digging where they thought the water lines ought to go, ended up about a foot away from their main <laughs> on the site before they were stopped. So we directed them. So uh, we just wanted to let you know that it, it was stopped before any damage was done. They have updated uh, the plans, and for the next two applicants that will join them on that row, uh, we have advised them, don't pick a location for your step tank. Don't pick a location for curb parking. Water is your primary utility that has to be placed first, because those lines don't belong to the city. They belong to seconds out here. So we just want to give you a heads up that that was a crisis averted, and we're going to revise our internal review process to catch those when the building's already there and they're expanding. Okay, okay thank you. That's Any questions important. on that? All right. Item 8D, appointment of Planning Commission Engineer, uh, City Manager Planner Recommendation. 
We have been working with Dan Small, excuse me, Smollett uh, Harpeth Civil uh, on several different projects for the last probably two years, year and a half anyway, uh, for different projects around town. Um, we found Dan to be extremely responsive, uh, extremely knowledgeable, very bright, and very capable of explaining complicated engineering theories and practices in layman's terms, which I greatly appreciate. Um, we would like to, uh, along with Sharon, uh, suggest uh, Dan Small and Harpeth Civil to be the acting engineer for the Kingston Springs Regional Planning Commission. Acting? The appointed? appointed. He's your appointed. And I might proffer that maybe a year and a half ago, Mr. Campbell, in a meeting where we did not have the presence of an engineer, on a traffic study and several other issues that presented a problem for the Planning Commission. So this appointment is exclusively for the Planning Commission. That's what he does. He reviews your, there's pass-through ordinance that takes care of that. No one seems to have heartburn with it at all, the way it's done. And I have found him to be intuitive, very well trained, very responsive. So he would be my recommendation um, for an appointment. The only question I have, who pays for it? How do we pay for it? It's paid through by pass-through. He bills only when he's doing a project, and he bills the applicant. He does not bill the town. It's pass-through professional charges only. Okay, so there's no cost to the town. But you needed an appointed engineer because we didn't have anybody to send things to um, outside of Collier, which they do your road work. Mm -hmm. so. so the name of the company is Harpeth Sybil, and what's the engineer's name? Dan Smola, S-M-O-L-A, comma, P-E, and as an added benefit to the town, he is also a certified flood manager with a designation on his P-E as well, his P-E as well. So he is uh, certified as a flood engineer. Okay. I would recommend that if uh, in any motion that you all entertain to uh, appoint him, that that also be combined with authorization to enter into a contract and execute the same uh, planning okay. commission chair and or other persons. So that contract gets executed with the planning yes. commission? Yes. Okay. You so do you have statutory I'll amend the motion to, to reflect that. Okay, so to appoint Dan Smola of Harpeth Civil as the Planning Commission Engineer. And to, With authority and to, to authorize execute a contract. Execution authorize of a contract, per se. Okay. So that's the motion? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Do you have a second? Second. Okay, any questions or comments? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Um, the next one, Mr. Chairman, I apologize, is just bylaws. They need to be updated. They're antiquated. They don't fall in line with state requirements for the Regional Planning Commission. Um, so they also don't fall in line with a couple of city ordinances for appointments to the board. So we're going to bring your bylaws back to you next month and get those straightened out. Okay. Just, Thank you. Just information. Thank you. Um, so. I had proposed item 9A. I, I'm fine deferring that right now, uh, unless unless you want to get into it today. I, I would be delighted if we could defer this particular one. Okay, okay. we can tonight. All right. Um, so item 9B for discussion only. Oh, that's part of the same thing, right? It is. So defer 9A and B. Um, so 9C, these are, by the way, these are information items. These are discussion only items. 9C, Neighborhood Preservation District Overlay Discussion on Non-Conforming Uses. Yes, sir. Um, as you might remember, we did an overlay for the downtown district that went a couple of blocks off of downtown to allow the Planning Commission the flexibility on case-by-case -case basis to look at home occupations because so many people were forced to work from home for COVID, and we passed that. This is a similar thing. 
You have a number of houses. I would like to stick to the period 1950 and before, because otherwise when you hit the 60s, they're just not architecturally or historically distinct. But I would like permission to explore an overlay. What we have are houses just like the one down here at the Methodist Church. That means setback. You don't have a large enough number of them to make a historic district. So every single time something like that comes up, we have to go through this convoluted process of getting that done. <coughs> this actually came uh, as a suggestion for me and from the mayor because of an issue that a person is having um, because we don't have any non-conforming insulation for expansion of any type of use in residential zones at all. So all of you kind of, except our new members, got a dose of that last month about nonconformity. So uh, in your packet, um, just as a courtesy, there's kind of a, an overlay district from another jurisdiction. It can be done so that we don't corrupt the base layer R2 zoning, but in lateral expansion, in this case a porch, you can't go any further out into the setback because you'll need that for right of way, but laterally, you can't even allow somebody to expand the porch width. So, uh, non conformity only allows them to repair and maintain, they can never expand. <coughs> so, it will be heard on a case by case basis, only where it's appropriate, and only involving structures that have been here at least since the 50s because they're architecturally distinct and brick ranch houses, frankly, are not. So just a heads up. Yeah, I think, I mean, you, I, you know, it's discussion only, but I think it's something worth pursuing because I, I, I think we want to encourage people to keep the older homes when possible too versus like the other option. I mean, you put people in a position currently where they would, they would possibly just choose to remove the home because that might be their best option. So I think this would be a way for people to work with keeping the old homes there. I'm a little biased, I know, but you've got Well, and I would concur <laughs> in that, uh, to make Mayor Gross's point, this would not increase the encroachment into the setback where in the front of the road or the side. It would simply allow somebody in a circumstance that wants to make their porch wider so they can center it on their window, do that. Um, we still, because the goal of the zoning ordinance with nonconformity is to eliminate it, so we have to be careful where we step and how we approach this. So we'll bring that back to you next month. Okay, thank you. Sure. Item uh, 9G, Harpeth Meadows HOA documents, dedication of roads. Okay. This one, um, the city attorney will not speak on, but if you'll remember, we had discussion about the roads in Harpeth, and we have asked um, for the HOA to meet. Um, I think Commissioner Clark in the City Commission meeting has brought it up again for the HOA by two-thirds vote to dedicate the roads to the city because we can't find any documents where that occurred. So there are different opinions about that, but we're going to address them as we go. We're going to make that request again that they meet and vote to, ded to dedicate the streets to the city. We also are receiving um, an ongoing uh, complaint about stormwater runoff on a particular lot within the subdivision. The easement, ditch, drainage, swale, whatever you want to refer to it as, does not appear on plat or any subsequent filings of plat. We did not, as a town, accept drainage issues on subdivision. So it's not the responsibility and we have directed the property owners to contact the HOA because it is within the purview of the HOA. So that's the update on that. That's it. Okay, and what about item 9E, the nonconformity annual training? We're going to make this really quick. You ready? Thank you. State statutes as Mr. Campbell can tell you from a very spirited discussion in the county several years ago, only insulate commercial and industrial activities. There is no insulation for nonconformity, somewhat loosely known as grandfathering, for residential structures. So the town of Kingston Springs at the state level, okay, 
So the town of Kingston Springs determined that there was a need back in 2006, where it seems like it was my very first meeting with the Planning Commission. They asked us to look at that. And so we did. That nonconformity allows you to, here's your pop quiz, maintain or the structure. So I just covered it, like, I know this is hard for you guys, maintain or repair. Yeah. So see that in your head. That's the only thing the non-conforming statute currently allows you to do. Repair. Maintain and repair. Or repair. Do we allow expansion of, an, of a non-conformity in commercial and industrial areas? Yes. Somebody yes. jump off the cliff. You yes. did. Yes. For sure. <coughs> Not only do we allow it, there are very few limitations on it. They can't expand it to new land that they acquire. So let's say that I have, I don't know, we're, we don't have one in the city, so I use this as an example, a slaughterhouse. And I buy 10 acres next door. I cannot automatically expand that slaughterhouse to the 10 acres next door because that's newly acquired property. However, I can continue to operate that, that slaughterhouse until it's been out of operation for a really long time, like 30 years, <laughs> and then you can make it go away. That does not apply to residential structures, just so you know. But it does apply signs. Who did? All right, town non-conforming legislation. Is there interest on this planning commission, this should be an easy thing, that we should look at structures that existed before this body or that ordinance existed to see if there's some flexibility uh, for houses that were here since 1950 and before. Is that a good idea to approach? Flexibility for housing that existed before your ordinance I know you got one positive yeah. about down there. Yeah. yeah. All right, so again, it, whether or not it's a good idea is the subject of your report at the next meeting, and with that, we are done. I want you to think about the implications of the changes. They're not necessarily bad or good, but there are implications to the change that you make. Yeah. And with that, we have finished. Okay. Before we Thank you, sure. Yes, sir. I, I, I want to announce tonight after all these years, this is my last planning commission meeting. I'm tired. Um, I've been coming to them, all these commission meetings, since 1974. No, 84, excuse me. And uh, I'll talk to anybody that wants to talk about whatever the issues are, and I'll offer my advice. But thank you. I've enjoyed doing it. I think the planning commission is most important function in city government. I really do. And uh, good luck and keep after. Work hard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tony, it's <clears throat> on a personal level for me and on a professional level for me, you and I have a bond that goes back a long way. And we have managed to, in spite of the fact that our personalities are somewhat similar, <laughs> we have managed to work together very well. I, for one, uh, will really miss your wisdom and your sense of history, but I know where to find you if I need you. That's true. And I'm always, you know, I'm, yes, I would like to talk to anybody about the issues and what my thoughts are. Well, and if there's a problem, I tell you will find you too. So. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be right up there getting ready to talk. Oh Lord no, honey, don't call me on my cell phone on Saturday afternoon. It'll be fine. We, we, we know each other that well. Motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.